Howdy YouTube, I'm going to be uh, doing a video today on uh, one of the Saturnids that I currently have in my collection. I've also got some stuff upstairs, but not any Saturnids. And um, did a poll on old social media to see if people wanted to see this, and, and they said yes. And I've got two with me today, and I planned on filming this yesterday but yesterday was first day of school so I was a little busy just getting back into the run of things so today I'm gonna be uh, talking about Cithronia regalis I couldn't really find a whole lot of good videos online uh, as far as like care goes including the whole pupation thing so hopefully this can answer um, some questions that you guys have um, which you're, you know, probably trying to find the, the same stuff. And I have some other Saturnids here as well, like... I've got... Ichalis Imperialis, but we'll have to get to him another day. So this is all going to focus on Cithronia regalis. So... They've declined a whole lot, and I'm just going to put the phone down here. Apologizing in advance if, like, the quality of video is poor. I'm shooting this on my phone. So, I found this guy, and they don't they don't like to be touched much, so I'll try and keep touching to a minimum, and with the, like, when they get to about this size, sometimes they do thrash, just to try and get them in a good, a good insight here. And you can see he's beginning to sort of turn tur turquoise up there by his thorax, starting to get green. Now, when they they're in, in much earlier in stars. They're they're a brown, dark purple, but they can easily be identified by an extreme abundance of horns. There'll be a lot more than this. And if you can see here, there's like this stripe, it's like costal stripe. You'll see a lot of that. And if I can, I don't want to bother him, but sometimes they'll like rear around and uh, hit you. And I found both both of the ones that I show you. Today I've been rearing them on walnut. As a larva, the nickname is Hickory Horn Devil, so they do eat hickory, but they, the, these guys seem to be fine. I think this is like black walnut, but so I eat hickory, walnut, pecan, probably even sumac, just like try plants in that general family. And um, nighttime hunts are, are I'd say, are good. Uh, Early in stars only feed at nighttime, but I found this guy during the daytime, and they'll like hang in a J shape like that, and they won't move like they they won't feed during the day. So close to like the uh, like right around the time when you know like eggs are laid, so you know like end of June, a bit into August when like stuff is hatched. Around then, you might be able to find some earlier in stars, maybe a bit before that too, but um. The earlier instars are pretty easy to find, and here we'll move on to the the next one. And um, um, if, if you've got them in smaller containers, would recommend just like putting a paper towel at the bottom, just so you can like collect the frass. It's easier to dump out. And if you are rearing them, don't just like throw in leaves in there because you'll have to like get stuff a whole lot. Would recommend like getting any type of small container, poking holes in it with like a knife or a fork or something, fill filling it with water, and then like sticking the plant in there, so the plant gets water and and you know lasts longer. So yeah, the, as early in stars, they'll start out brown, and then they'll start to look like the, uh, closer to the fifth instar larvas, and now in this one, which hopefully I can actually try and get this guy out, you can see just how much larger this dude is, he's actually up at the top, so hopefully I don't, like, hit him. Right, there he is. So this is, try and get him on me here. Got a very good grip. Don't try and just like yank them off. Trying to like pry off their pro legs one by one until you can get them to come off. All right. So this is about fifth in star. When they get ready to pupate, their like whole body will sort of turn that turquoise color. So they're quite large. Actually, one of the uh, largest caterpillars in North America. And as far as mass goes. The adults, um, 
the Regal Moth, Royal Walnut Moth, Cithronia Regalis, um, are the largest in terms of mass, but Cecropia is largest in terms of size. So these spikes are just sort of like a ruse. They can move. Uh, but but these, these little black ones, are actually a little bit hard. Not extremely hard. And they're not poisonous or toxic or whatever. Like, you can touch them and touch the spines. and They're not going to hurt you. They're perfectly harmless and actually a little, a little cute. Um, they eat a lot. Like, I just put this plant in yesterday and, like, he ate, you know, all up through here, so ate quite a bit, and there's a lot of frass at the bottom, um, but as they do get closer to around the size, the more recognizable hickory horn devil, you're going to want to have some type of medium in the bottom of a cage, or uh, do it however you like, I personally prefer this, that you can either, like, if they're sm like a smaller species, um, you might be able to fit a quite a few in here, but if, you know, like with the Saturnids, when they do get to a large size and they don't take well in numbers, you might be able to fit maybe like, uh, maybe like three, maybe even five if they were like a smaller Saturnid, but I had been rearing orange striped oakworms in here, and the larvae are at, like the, sorry, not larvae, the uh, pupas are actually down at the bottom, but just some type of either dirt medium or um, sphagnum moss or something that these guys can burrow down into, and then pupate, and then you can move them into some type of box that's not airtight, but doesn't have a ton of airflow, and is still sort of in the ground, occasionally miss them, and you can overwinter them. I'll get to a video later on with that. Make sure you definitely have a lot of food, even for one, they they do eat, eat a lot. They're quite an impressive caterpillar. They're, um, they're very fun to rear. I've been, I've had this guy for at least a couple weeks now, and he's he's grown quite a bit. Um, hickory trees tend to be relatively rare in my area, so would recommend checking black walnut out. If you see any of these, like frass pellets, there's probably one in the area, and when they get to a size like this, they're normally relatively easy to find if they're within reach. A very attractive caterpillar and a moth. Hopefully if both of these two make it, I'll be able to post some videos on them next summer. They uh, they tend to be a bit later as far as the Saturnid moths go, like hatching out later in the summer. Um, as far as, you know, how whether or not this is like an easy species to rear, haven't quite made it to the the uh, the pupil stage yet. But as a as a larva, they seem to be relatively easy to take care of, as long as you have a lot of walnut and airtight container. Don't put them in airtight plastic things like something like this, or a bigger glass container. You don't really have to do that with but some type of breathable material. Uh, Clean out the frass. They seem to be seem to be pretty good. Just would highly recommend that you make sure that you have a lot of food for these guys. I wouldn't recommend rearing them unless you have uh, either a walnut tree, hickory tree, pecan tree, something like that close to you. And with that, I suppose I'll I'll end it there. Hopefully the information in this video was helpful. Thanks, and see ya.